Hi everyone, welcome to Tea Break at Two. Now this week we've been thinking about Jesus who is God, who has power over sickness. And at the moment we're still in what's called lockdown and having to stay at home more than normal and not being able to go to school to help keep people safe from this sickness, this virus called coronavirus. And there are lots of people in our church family who are helping either in the hospital or the care home or looking after friends and family and neighbours who are helping them and helping to keep them safe and well. And maybe even there are people in your family who work in hospital or at the doctors or are working hard to help people to get better who are sick. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about someone from this book that's from 10 of those and it's called Everyone A Child Should Know and it's a brilliant book. It's got lots of different people in it who loved God, who told other people about him some amazing stories and I want to share one with you that I've been reading this week about someone you may have heard of her called Florence Nightingale. There's a picture of her that's not actually Florence Nightingale but there's a drawing of her there and Florence Nightingale lived from 1820 to 1910 and it says have you ever been in hospital? If you have were you visiting someone or were you a patient? Were you in hospital? And did you see nurses helping people? Maybe even someone in your family is a nurse. Well, when Florence Nightingale was a, a girl, hospitals in England, they were really nasty and dirty places. And the nurses were sometimes nasty and dirty too. And they often didn't help people at all. Florence's family was rich. They had lots of money. And they thought Florence should live like other rich girls. Go to smart parties, wear smart clothes and play with smart friends. But Florence was Jesus's friend. She knew that Jesus didn't want her to just live like that. He wanted her to help people. Florence wanted to be a nurse and help people who were ill. Florence's parents were very cross because rich girls weren't supposed to be nurses in nasty, dirty hospitals. But Florence wanted to make hospitals clean and safe. Somewhere people got better, not worse. And Florence got her big chance when she went to look after ill and wounded soldiers in the Crimea in Russia. She made sure the hospitals were clean and safe, not nasty or dirty. She taught nurses how to make people better, not worse. And when she came home, she set up a special school to teach more nurses how to care for people. Today, Hospitals are clean and safe places where nurses help and care and where people usually get better, not worse. Thanks to Florence Nightingale, who wanted to do something for her friend, Jesus. Now, talking about friends, I'm sure you've got lots of friends and I know it's sad that you can't probably see many of them at the moment but there's one friend who was Florence Nightingale's friend who's my friend who might be your friend too who is Jesus who is always there and he's here with us right now and Jesus wants us to talk to him Jesus who is God who loves you and me wants us to chat to him and tell him about how we're feeling about what is going on in our lives. And so there's another book by 10 of those called What Every Child Should Know About Prayer. And this is a brilliant book. It helps us to know how to talk to God. It gives us ideas of things we can tell him because we share life with the people around us and we tell our friends and family things, don't we? But God wants us to talk to him 
about the things that matter to us because they matter to him. And even though we can't see God, he's here with us all of the time. And he always listens to our prayer. And this little book has a bit about how we can pray for God to heal the sick. So I thought, having thinking about this week of Jesus, who is God, who has power over sickness, listening to a little bit about Florence Nightingale, that it will be good for us to pray for our church family and others who are perhaps being doctors and nurses, who are working to look after those who are sick, and for anyone that we know who might be feeling poorly. Because this book tells us that God is a healer. He's the one who made our bodies, and he's the one who heals our bodies. So when those we love are sick, we should pray and ask God to heal them. Now, sometimes God answers our prayers for the sick by making them better, by making them well again. But sometimes God allows them to continue to be sick. And sometimes God answers our prayers for those who are sick by welcoming them into his presence in heaven. And we feel really sad, don't we, when people we love die. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when a person who knows Jesus dies, we can be sure that that person is safe and happy with Jesus. When someone is sad because someone they love has died, we can pray for them to be comforted by the truth of the gospel and the presence of God. So who do you know who is sick that you can pray for or maybe you could pray for someone who is sad because someone they love has died or maybe you know someone who's a doctor or nurse and you could pray for them and ask God to give them the strength and the energy to keep working hard to help people get better. I think we should pray now, we'll chat to God, I'm going to chat to God and if you agree with my prayer, then you can say, Amen. So let's close our eyes. That helps me to concentrate. And we'll say a prayer and chat to God, asking him to help those who are working to look after those who are sick or who are poorly. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you made us and you know us and you love us. Thank you that you're right here with us now and thank you that you care about each and every one of us. Father God, we thank you so much for all the doctors and the nurses who are working hard in the hospitals, at the doctor's surgeries and in the care homes and people who are looking after their family or friends or neighbours who are sick at this time. Father, we pray that you will help them to have the energy and the strength and the wisdom to know what to do to help them get better. We pray for people we know or people at church or people in Leyland who are sick or who are really poorly. Father, we pray that you will help them to get the medicine that they need to get better. But Father, we pray too for those people who have lost someone that they love. Please would you give them comfort and your peace and please help them to trust Jesus. Father, we thank you that you have the power over nature, the power over sickness and the power over death. Please help us to keep chatting to you, to keep reading about you in the Bible and to keep trusting you. Amen. And now we're going to watch a little video um, carrying on thinking about Jesus who has power over sickness and power over death. And it's about Jairus' daughter and it's from the Bible. So have fun watching that little video now. But from me, take care. God bless. Bye bye. Jesus got into a boat and crossed the Sea of Galilee.
he stood on the shore and a large crowd gathered around him. Then Jairus, one of the rulers in the synagogue, <laughs> fell at Jesus' feet and begged for his help. My daughter is about to die. Please come touch her so she will be healed and live, he said. Jesus went with Jairus and many people followed, crowding around him. In the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had seen many doctors and spent all her money, but no one could help her. She was getting worse. The woman had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She said to herself, if I touch even his clothes, I will be healed. As soon as she touched Jesus' clothes, her bleeding stopped and she knew she was healed. At that moment, Jesus felt that power had gone out of him. He turned around and said, who touched my clothes? Jesus' disciples pointed out that many people were crowded around him, but Jesus kept looking around. The woman, knowing she was healed, came forward and fell before Jesus. She told him what had happened. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, you are healed. While Jesus was speaking, some men came from Jairus' house and said, your daughter is dead. Do not bother Jesus anymore. Jesus heard what the men said and he told Jairus, do not be afraid, just believe. Jesus and three of his disciples went to Jairus' house. The people there were crying and wailing loudly. Jesus said, why are you crying? The child is not dead, she is sleeping. The people laughed at Jesus and he told them all to go. Jesus took Jairus and his wife into the room where the child was. He took the girl by the hand and said, little girl, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began walking around. Jairus and his wife were amazed. Jesus told them to give the girl some food and to not tell anyone what had happened. By healing the woman and raising the little girl from the dead, Jesus showed his power as the Messiah. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to save people from sin and death. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sin and changes us to be more like his son.